So this video has been requested quite a lot lately, ever since I've been on the sugar kick. And, you know, speaking of the sugar kick, it's July now. At least one-seventh of this picture is still sugar. So the last video I checked out was Stay Gold, and I really loved that song. I think that it's not getting enough support, like in the community, honestly, for how well done it is. Some people in the comments, they're saying that, like, this song means a lot to them. So I'm guessing that there's some sort of emotional message to it that uh, that they can relate to. Now, this is a lyric video that one of my friends gave to me. Thank you, Tina. It's supposed to have the most accurate lyrics. I'm ready for a little bit more Augusty. After seeing his much lighter side on Stay Gold, kick back. Augusty! Okay, uh, first and foremost, I'm just gonna start this over again now because clearly the lyrics are what matters to this song. Um, just reading a couple of the lines, you could tell that this is something very important to him. So I'm going to go back from the beginning. I'm just going to start reading the lyrics right from the start. It seems like a message about depression so far. This is starting to feel more like a story at this point already. Just from the bass standpoint, it seems like it's he's talking about almost the juxtaposition between his idol self and his actual self and possibly be having fears that the one version will take over for the other version or that one version won't be able to maintain with the other version. Um, that's just the impression that I'm getting so far, but, but we'll see what it goes into. Let's take it back a little bit. Ooh, see that right there, that's see that's a very telling line. So he's saying Min Yoongi is already dead because August D or Suga killed him. A passion that is dead and comparing myself with others has become every day for me. A passion that is dead. So I wonder if this is like him talking about how like, you know, his success is being attributed to to, to his fame at this point and not to how he feels about the music or how he feels of, or his passion for the music or the writing or anything like that. It's more about the stuff that he shouldn't care about and he knows he shouldn't care about. <laughs> Yeah, so he's like, he's, he's, dude, I, I love how this is being told. It kind of reminds me of like, um, Eminem, Stan, you know, it's a, it's a story. Like this is legitimately, he's telling a story from his life, even if the events that took place aren't real, I'm guessing that they are, but even if they aren't, the feeling is definitely real. So I'm really into the, to the structure of how he's telling this story. Oof. 
don't give a shit, I don't give a fuck. Cause I'm mad, the jump with that. Like, I'm not from Gida, Hanaman. She'll go for good, the good, I give you a toast. And I don't know, I'm not going to Hanaman. That I'm doing it most of all, but I'm still in my body, not in my hand on that. Get the nut. Get the nut. Yeah, see, he's saying here. Oh man, his voice, dude. The way that he plays with his voice to tell this story is just excellent. Man, dude is so talented. I know I keep saying that in all my videos, but I really, I mean, I'm jealous. And also a little turned on. He's clearly an introvert uh, at his core, but he's having these serious thoughts and committing suicide thoughts, like just depressive, the depressive nature of who he is inside. And he's thinking that. If he succeeds at his passion, then that everything might change. But I'm guessing he's about to say that that's not true. Becoming more of a monster as time passes. <laughs> You know, everybody hates himself sometimes, right? But I feel like he might hate himself a little bit more than most people, <laughs> which is really sad. But it's also a quality of a very artistic, intelligent person. A lot of people that have very high IQs struggle with appreciating themselves or just people in general. And uh, I, I think that he probably felt that from a very young age. <clears throat> he has probably been waiting to tell this story. And I know this this dropped, you know, in 2016, I think. But he was probably waiting to tell this story from his ar own artistic expression style for years before he was able to. <laughs> So he's willing to trade himself to make other people happy. All right, I'm struggling to follow this. I'm just gonna listen here on out, and then I'm gonna go back to this part later. Oh, vocals. Dude, his voice like just sounds perfect here. So much intensity. Damn, dude. Yeah, so Fire Song, just uh, the concept alone was super impressive. Just everything about just the structure of it, the build of it, the construction of when certain things would fall out, certain sounds, you know, they would get rid of uh, just all sounds, maybe they'd just get rid of percussion in certain areas. And it was all to add to the emotional intensity that he was bringing to the story. From a writing standpoint, a plus from a lyric standpoint a plus 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 now let's go back and check out that last uh, verse one more time because it started going real fast I couldn't keep up so I'm gonna I'm gonna be pausing a lot probably here okay. still calls himself a little shit man yo low So it seems like at this point he's saying that he's accepted what he's turned into. This person that like 
he felt before like he was calling himself a monster, like the monster was coming out. But now he's accepted that the monster is part of who he is, and he's just going to keep going into it. You know, it kind of reminds me of, like, you know, if you've ever watched, like, a movie or a TV show where one of the good guy characters does something evil. And then instead of trying to, uh, you, you know, find redemption, they'll go further and further down the evil path because I it's just care. so much easier than than caring, than... You know, having to concern yourself with the bad, the repercussions that come from the evil deeds that you've done, they'd rather just keep going down that path, the path of least resistance, which is to just keep being evil and not concern yourself with it. And it seems like this is a very similar idea as to what he's saying with himself as becoming this idol rapper. To end the wandering and there was no answer. And it's not even like he's doing it just for the fame and the glory. It's like he's doing it because he has these inner conflicts inside of himself. Even though he was trying not to lose himself throughout that process, the idea of stopping the confusion and the conflict, the inner turmoil that he has, is very appealing to him. <laughs> Seiko is a type of watch. So now he's saying like the only reason that you didn't sell out is because you aren't good enough to. And I also love that he's just being so blatantly obvious about how he feels about the fans. Like, I am sure, I am absolutely 100% sure that he cares about his fans as much as his fans care about him. But he's also very aware of who he is and the impact and influence that he has on people. And the fact that he's willing to come out and say, like, you know, he's watching these, he could just make a gesture and everybody will follow him. It's like, there's an element of ego to it. But it's not bad ego. It's it's real ego. It's it's ego of reality. You know, it's the fact that he knows that this is the truth and he's not going to hide from it. There's dude, there's so much going on with the lyrics in this song and uh, they're really well written and really intense and emotional. And honestly, at the end of the day, I'm just happy that he got to tell this story because if I were in his position and I felt that way to be able to put my message out there like that, like this, like how he's doing it right now would probably be one of my ultimate goals. You know, you want the fame, you want the glory, you want the money, you want the prestige, but you also want to tell your story and you want to tell your story truthfully. I think he, and he he's kind of nailing it right here. Like nobody could tell him that this isn't good because this is all from him. It's just how he feels. It's just who he is. If there's any part of me that wasn't already just head over heels for Sugar's talent, um, the lyricism in this one and his just ability to be real with his fans is takes it up just uh, an extra notch. I really, really like the way that this was constructed, and I really the metaphors they played with, but also just the honesty, just the straight up honesty where he's just willing to say. This is how it is. This is how I feel. You know that he sat there in his room in the dark, probably while it was thunderstorming outside, just writing these lyrics and rewriting these lyrics and making sure that everything that he wrote down was exactly how he truly felt. Anyway, guys. Okay. Uh, come back Saturday. Run MV. And I'm going to be releasing one episode every Saturday of the BTS uh, universe storyline uh, going forward. Just, I don't want to fall back on it anymore. All right, guys.